You're watching a payentry.com tutorial by CBiz Payroll. In this tutorial, we will be discussing how to submit payroll using the payentry.com system. You will want to make sure all employee changes have been completed on the employee screens before starting the payroll entry process. From the main menu, select the payroll entry option. You will see the active check date at the top of your screen. The system should automatically select the next scheduled check date. However, if you need to change this, you can do so by using the change link at the top right of the box. If you need to change your check date to an off-cycle check date that is not available, please contact your CBiz customer service team. In the main section of this window, you will see three steps for the payroll process. One, start payroll. Two, payroll batches and three, submit payroll. There is also a link for the check calculator on this screen. This link can be used to calculate a manual check. We will discuss manual checks in further detail later in this session. To begin the payroll process, select step one, start payroll. The system will list all batches that are included in the payroll cycle. You should make sure that the pay period beginning and ending dates are accurate and then click the Start Payroll button. If the pay cycle dates are not correct, please contact your CBiz customer service team to have your calendar updated for all future dates. Once you click the Start Payroll button, the system will indicate that the cycle is being started. You can click Refresh or just wait for the page to update. The system will automatically take you to Step 2, Payroll Batches. In the Payroll Batches screen, there are two ways to enter payroll, Employee Pay Entry and Batch Pay Entry. You may switch between these two entry methods at any time during the payroll entry process. Batch Pay Entry is the best method for entering similar types of hours on all employees. This screen will give you a list of all employees included in the batch. Any auto pay the employee has set up and columns to enter basic payroll information, such as regular and overtime hours. To change the columns that appear, you can modify your preferences. Under Batch Pay Entry Settings, you can select additional columns to include. We will include overtime hours as an additional column. Click Add, Save Changes, and go back to Payroll Batches. We can see that the overtime hours is now an option in the Batch Pay Entry screen. You can add as many additional columns as you need in order to efficiently key the payroll. To view additional detail, you can click on the Details link and this will take you over to the Employee Pay Entry. Let's return to the Batches screen and enter a check using the Employee Pay Entry option. Remember, you can move back and forth between these two methods throughout the payroll entry process. Employee Pay Entry allows you to access to greater detail during the payroll entry process. However, it can be more time consuming as the system requires you to enter one employee at a time. We will select the employee we want to enter payroll information on. In this screen, we will see additional information for the employee, such as department codes, statuses, and pay rates. If the employee is an auto pay or salaried employee, this information will appear in the auto pay section. To pay the employee salary, simply check the box. To override the employee salary, uncheck the box and enter override information on the pay lines. If the employee is set up as an auto pay for their salary, this box will be automatically checked when the payroll is started. You should not need to manually check this box for normal salary employees. If this box is not automatically checked, you can update the employee record under the Auto Pay tab and activate the salary option. To pay an hourly employee, enter the hours in the hours column. The system will automatically use the rate of pay that is set up on the employee's record. You do not need to enter anything in the rate column unless you wish to override the system rate. This amount will calculate automatically. Do not enter an amount in this field unless you wish to override the system calculation. To add additional earning codes, you can use the drop-down box at the bottom of the earning list and choose a new code. 
to add additional columns, such as department for labor allocation, you would want to update the employee pay entry settings under preferences. To view an employee check stub, click on the calculate check button. You do not need to click on this unless you wish to view the check. The system will automatically calculate all checks as soon as the data is entered, so it's not necessary to click on this unless you want to view the calculation. To add an additional paycheck to an employee, use the New Paycheck tab. This will create a second check and will calculate independently from the first check. It will be listed as Paycheck 2 and create a new tab. If you need to delete a check, click on the Delete Check button at the bottom of the screen. You have the ability to override attributes of a particular check by either choosing a preselected option or customizing this individual check. To choose a preselected option, you must have paycheck attributes customized for different kinds of checks, such as commissions and bonuses. If this is an option you would like to implement, please contact your customer service team. The other option is to modify an individual check by clicking the Edit link. In this screen, you will have the option to edit individual checks and override various calculations. The system will default the tax calculation to the employee's pay frequency. It is recommended that you leave this value as the default for all regular pay cycle checks. You may override the federal and state withholding percentage. This is generally used for additional checks like a bonus or commission. In addition to tax calculations, the screen offers the ability to block deductions on a regular check. You can block labor allocation so that all labor is allocated to the employee's home department. You can also block individual deduction codes or all deductions or earnings by clicking Check All. The bottom portion of this screen contains memo information. You can use these fields to enter memo on the check stub or on the employee for internal purposes. Check stub memo will print on the employee check stub and be visible to your employees. Once you've selected your desired options, click Save Changes This Paycheck Only. It is recommended that this screen is used only for one-time changes on an individual employee basis. These changes will apply to this check on this employee only. To override information on a particular check type, we recommend setting up a paycheck attribute so that all checks are treated the same, such as a bonus or commission check. For assistance in setting up a custom paycheck attribute, please contact your customer service team. Once you have entered the pay information for this employee, you can move to the next record by checking the next arrow. At any time, you may exit this screen and enter the batch pay entry screen. In the Batch Pay Entry screen, you can easily switch to the Employee Pay Entry section for more detail by clicking the Detail link. The Check Calculator link in the Payroll Batches screen gives you the ability to calculate and record manual checks. Generally, a manual check is calculated out of the normal check date cycle. To enter a manual check, select the employee to record the check to. Drop down and choose the earning code for the check, Enter the hours or amount and click Calculate Check button. Verify that the check stub is accurate and then save the check. If you need to update any information, do so in the Check Data Entry section and then click Recalculate Check. If you wish to exit this screen before saving the check, simply click Return to Batches. Once the check is entered correctly, there are two options for saving the check. One option is to issue the check immediately using Check Stock on Site. You will simply write a check for the amount of the net pay, and CBiz will record the check to the payroll system to be processed with the next normal scheduled ch check date. You will want to enter the check number that you're using for reference purposes. If you want the PayEntry.com system to print the check for you, check the box for Print Check. You must have legal paper check stock on hand to use this feature. The other option is to issue the check as part of the next scheduled payroll cycle. CBiz will print the check and include it with your next payroll delivery if you have this service. Once you've selected your option, please save your check. 
Once you return to the payroll batches, you will notice an additional batch has automatically been created called VM, or Void Manual. This refers to voids and manuals that contain all manual checks or voided checks to be processed with this payroll cycle. Once you've entered all payroll data and manual checks for the payroll cycle, you will need to run a pre-process register. This report is critically important to ensure that all payroll data is complete and accurate. Click on the pre-process register link. You can update the sort order and view options if you wish. Click Run Report and the system will generate a status box. Please note that if you have pop-up filters activated, you may not see the status box. You can remove your pop-up filters or you can view the file in the report section of the system. To view the report, click on the main menu and Reports. All reports processed within the last 24 hours will be stored in this view. Once your report is ready, the system will show a blue check mark. Click the download link to open the PDF file. You should carefully review the information in this report prior to submitting your payroll. If you see changes that are needed, exit this report and make the updates in the payroll batches area. You may rerun this report as many times as necessary, and we recommend always checking this report prior to submitting your payroll and keeping a copy of the final report on file. Once you've confirmed that the payroll has been entered accurately and is complete, you'll want to close and submit the payroll for processing. Click on the Close Payroll link, and then click the Close Payroll button to confirm that you're ready to submit. Once the payroll is closed, you will click Submit Payroll, and this will send the information to CBIS for processing. The Payentry.com system will sync with the CBIS database every 20 minutes. Once the system sync, your payroll will begin processing and all necessary files or shipments will be generated. Please keep in mind that CBIS requires payrolls be submitted by 2 p.m. local time to ensure same-day processing and timely deposit of taxes and direct deposits. Thank you for watching our payroll entry tutorial. If you have any additional questions about entering payroll, please contact your CBIS service team. If you're not currently using CBIS services and would like to learn more, please contact us using the information listed on this screen. Thanks and have a great day.